Hello and welcome to the Accountant Subject Options presentation. Just a quick breakdown about what we're going to go through in the presentation. So just an overview of the subject, the structure of the subject, the content and coursework involved, um, how it's assessed, student feedback, um, student achievements and statistics, um, and the career options available to students in accountancy. The accountancy course is two years long and it offers examination at both higher and ordinary level. The accounting course is numerically based, um, but we also cover theory and procedures as well. Theory generally accounts for about 15% of the whole paper. Um, so a small percentage of the course is theory based, but this does accommodate students who do find it difficult to learn off large pieces of text. Junior Cert Business is not a requirement to take on Leave and Cert Accounting. It can be an advantage in some areas, depending on what topics we're covering. It can be easily accessible for students who enjoyed accounting as part of Junior Cycle Business. They may find it easy to pick up some topics at Leave and Cert. Um, with the new Junior Cycle Business course, a lot of accounting has actually been taken off that course. So we do really start from the basics in accountancy in fifth year. Um, it does offer students who are confident in maths an opportunity to excel in a similar subject because it is so uh, numbers based. And the course does offer a hardworking student the real possibility of a high grade. And we'll talk about that further on in the presentation. I found uh, accounting easy in junior cert business, so I decided to give it a crack in leaving cert. Uh, I chose accounting because I enjoyed accounts at uh, business at junior cert. Uh, I picked accounting because at the time the other subjects that were available uh, didn't interest me. And accounting is a numbers based subject and I like working with numbers. Alright, the reason why I chose accounting was that I wanted to do a business course. I wanted to learn how to do proper accounts and maybe also learn about finance. So the structure of the subject. Generally with accounting or any of the option subjects, you'd have five classes per week. It's usually two double classes and one single. For all of our topics that we're going to cover, we would usually spend the first one to two lessons with just a small introduction and any theory that's needed for that topic. After that, then it is literally just a matter of practice, practice, practice. It's consistency, making sure that you're completing the homework um, and that you're following the procedures that we do in class. Accounting does allow for paired and individual work and um, it is beneficial to work with other students in the class as well when you're trying to work your way through a question. Um, the use of ICT is also used throughout accountancy um, for fifth and sixth year. Uh, there's a lot of video tutorials that are recorded. They would all be posted onto Schoology and a lot of online resources available to students as well via Schoology. So whether that's a work solution um, or a voiceover similar to what we're doing here today. So just to talk a small bit about the content and the actual coursework that students will be completing in their two years of accounting. Um, so accountancy covers aspects of business and social life, which are generally not dealt with in any other subject in the business programme. It does provide students with life skills such as budgeting and financial planning, and this can be used both on a personal level and also for any further career opportunities. The accountant course at Leave and Cert does set a strong basis for students who are planning on studying accountancy or even business at third level institutions. Um, a lot of the stuff that students would be covering perhaps in maybe their first two semesters, they may have already completed as part of their Leave and Cert work. For the Leave and Cert, we cover two key areas in accountancy. The main area that we would concentrate on would be the financial accounting aspect. This generally involves preparing accounts, usually at the end of a financial year or at the end of a particular period. Um, we record and extract information from these accounts and it allows the students then to analyse the financial information for the purpose of making decisions. 
The second aspect then would be management accounting and this would all have to do with future planning. So students would learn how to analyse business costs and prepare budgets. So here I have included just a couple of the topics that we do cover um, for accounting for your leave insert. Um, so just to draw your attention to the manufacturing accounts, um, sole trader accounts and company accounts. These um, accounts would be familiar to students who would have completed the junior cert and um, they would have done a small bit of work on creating those accounts. Everything else that's on this list here, students at junior cert wouldn't have seen any of these. So we do really start from scratch and try to build solid foundations in fifth year for all students. Again, just to draw your attention to the theory. Um, so in recent years, the amount of theory being asked on the Leave and Serve paper has increased. OK, so this is a trend that we generally think is likely to continue. Students should generally expect to see theory questions in all sections of the paper, but we would usually really only see them in section two and section three of the exam. Um, so usually the theory questions that are asked would be for you to interpret information from the calculations that you have already done. And again, we cover all of the theory in class. But like I said in, in the previous slides, it only accounts to about 15 percent um, of the overall paper. If you are pushing for that H1 or H2, the theory is important to push you up to that point. The Leave and Cert accounting exam would make up 100% of your grade. The paper itself is divided up into three sections. In each section there are specific questions or guaranteed questions that would come up every single year. So in section one we answer one question, in section two we would answer two questions and in section three we would just answer one question. In accounting we would concentrate quite a lot on um, section one of the paper. Um, and question one. So question one appears every single year. Um, the question is worth 120 marks. So it's the most marks on the whole paper. The question itself um, varies between three different key topics that could be asked, but you're essentially just asked to do the same question with some slightly different figures um, for each one. When we move on to section two of the paper, we are given the option of three questions and we would answer two questions from the paper. From this section, we have one question that is guaranteed on the higher and the ordinary level paper. For higher level, you would have a choice then of the other two questions, you would pick one. At ordinary level, you would have a second guaranteed question in this section as well. So that would be two questions guaranteed for ordinary level students. In section two, then the second guaranteed question for ordinary level students would be a cash flow statement. For higher level students, they can be examined on any area um, that they have studied all throughout the curriculum. Um, and again, it's just about practicing all of the questions to make sure that you are prepared for the exam and that you can answer at least another one question in this section of the paper. Section three of the paper then is the section that would concentrate on management accounting. In this part of the paper, you're asked two questions. One question will be on costing and a second question will be on budgeting. So you have the option of deciding between either of those questions and both of those topics would come up on the higher and the ordinary level paper every single year as well. So that would be three out of four questions guaranteed on the paper. Just to quickly recap then on the assessment at Leaving Certificate Accounting. So the exam is worth 100% of your grade. Students will have three hours to complete the exam. Students must answer four questions on the paper. And that's the same for both higher and ordinary level. On the ordinary level paper, we can prepare four questions that are guaranteed on the paper. So that covers ordinary level students for the four questions they must complete in the exam. At higher level then, three out of the four questions that appear, the topics are guaranteed. So the questions may change slightly year to year. They could ask different aspects of a particular topic. Um, but again, it's just about making sure that we're prepared in advance for that exam. There's a lot of repetition. So once you know how to do question one, you're going to
master our profession, so it's easy that way. Um, it's repetitive, so it's handy to get the hang of it. Uh, I like Ken because it's a handy subject to have. And um, when you do a lot of the past exam paper questions, they all just kind of repeat the formulas, just the numbers are different. So once you've uh, got like two subjects, two questions correct, uh, you pretty much know the rest of it. I like how it's logical based on math and whatever, but. Also, I like draw. I kind of got used to drawing all the weird charts you have to do, but it's still pretty fun. It's also just really that the work has also just been recorded. And, well, there's always one direct answer. Well, if you ask me what exactly is difficult about accountancy, you will understand it's the massive amounts of charts and charts and weird algorithms you're gonna have to learn for the exam questions. I even tell to a professional accountant, he thinks, why the hell do they go like this, huh? There's a lot of work to understand the questions at the start, but you know, it's all worth it once you get to know it. So just in terms of the results for the Leaving Cert in Accountancy, um, I've included the last three years here. Um, I feel that it's important to show what the results um, were like before the likes of predicted grades um, or a hybrid Leaving Cert where students had the option of sitting the exam. So if you look at the results from 2019, um, nearly 7% of students received a H1, um, so a higher level, which would give them 100 points. Um, and then the second statistic there that's important is that nearly 50% of students who sat the higher level paper actually achieved between a H1 and a H3. Similar statistics for ordinary level then in 2019, 43% um, receiving between an O1 and an O3, um, and then 8.9% of students achieving an O1. If we look at last year's, um, we can see that they're gradually, the percentages are gradually getting um, higher. So um, for the higher level paper, a H1, 25.9% of students received a H1. So it's a massive increase. And again, you will hear a lot of people talking about the inflation in terms of the results and points over the last couple of years. Um, and then H1 to H3 is almost 70%. Um, for ordinary level then, 24% achieved an O1 and 64% achieved an O1 to an O3. So I just feel that it's important to maybe look at the three years across the board and um, take into account that the Leaving Cert will probably uh, not have any changes made to it when you're going to be sitting it. And you could be looking more along the lines of the results from 2019. But it is important to know that nearly 50 percent of students who sit the higher level paper um, achieve between a H1 and a H3 as it's a very repetitive paper. Um, this is one of the main reasons why students actually pick accounting to build up the points for college courses um, that they need. With accountancy, there's a lot of different avenues you could go down in terms of potential careers. Um, so we'll talk about um, the accounting route, I suppose, first of all. So it is a dynamic and challenging career. Accountancy is a recognised qualification that can be used abroad and internationally. Private accountancy firms um, chart, uh, provide chartered accountant programmes. And what they do here is they provide training for graduates with the prospect of working their way up. There is an interview with a trainee graduate. If you'd like to click the link here, it'll take you onto YouTube and they'll be able to explain what their experience is of working their way up. Um, and training with a private accountancy firm. Of course, accountants are not only limited to working in an accountant firm, there's also a wide variety of finance roles in many different types of organisations. If the organisation needs to do payroll, complete taxes, they must have some sort of finance um, or payroll department. So 
the different types of organizations you could potentially be looking at social media organizations for example facebook and um, tiktok going to set up a head office in ireland as well they will need people to fill those finance roles manufacturing companies technology companies local and central government pharma companies banks and insurance companies and also retail so just to provide a small bit of information in terms of remuneration for accountants um, you can see the different areas here on the slide that they could potentially work in tax accounts payable accounts receivable but you can also see their possible annual salaries at this level so depending on where it is that they decide to work so the lower rate of pay which would be 30,000 a year higher rate 35 so it is an annual salary based on thousands so on this slide here just to draw your attention to the part qualified so if you were working in a private accountancy firm and you wanted to work your way up you would be looking at the salaries that are located down here so you can see here the lower and the higher rates of pay just to give you an idea roughly of how much you would be working with if you were to take that on after college thank you so much for taking the time to watch through this presentation if you have any other um, questions or you need any additional information please do feel free to email me i've included my email here on this slide, so denisekearens at luskcc.ie.